A uh, good rule of thumb is two-year salary, sir. Try this. <laughs> I can't afford that. I'm an educator. Seymour. I'll take it. Hey, that was a clip from the movie, The Simpsons. What do you think? Did you understand it? There was an idiom in it. Did you hear it? Hello, my name is Dakota, and if you've ever walked out of an English class thinking, hey, I'm beginning to really understand English only to be totally frustrated when you sat down and watched an American movie. You may have understood most of the words being spoken, but you couldn't understand the meaning. Having a clear understanding of English is so important, whether it's being used in school, social situations, or in your professional life. English has become the common world language and regardless of why you're trying to learn it, it is essential that you understand the true meaning of what is being said. To do so, you must understand idioms and phrasal verbs. This is why I'm making these videos. I want to help you learn about idioms and phrasal verbs, but more importantly, I want to do it in a fun and enjoyable way. Learning a new language can be so boring. I'm hoping that, by using movies and TV shows, you'll be able to enjoy the learning process more. There will be seven idioms or phrasal verbs examined in each of these videos and there will be an initial series of videos analyzing about 100 idioms and phrasal verbs. The number of these phrases will quickly ramp up to more than 1,000 idioms and phrasal verbs as more videos are uploaded. These videos would be great for teachers as well. So sit back and relax and let's learn about idioms and phrasal verbs. Okay, let's take a look at our first phrase. The name of this phrase is, change of pace. The meaning of this phrase is, a change in the usual activities, or to do something different than before. An example of this phrase is, it's so nice getting away from the city, and getting out to the countryside. What a great change of pace. The dogs are saying, that changing the location of where they typically walk is enjoyable and fun. Another example of this phrase is, Normally, we go shopping on Friday evenings, but tonight we're watching a scary movie. What a great change of pace. The woman is saying that doing something different, watching a movie, on this day, is fun. The last example of this phrase is, I know that you normally enjoy drinking white wine, but I found this great Merlot, I want you to try. It'll be a nice change of pace. The man is saying that trying a bottle of red wine might be a fun change. And just to summarize, change of pace means a temporary variation in a normal routine. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Well, this platter doesn't look all that happy to me. It looks bored. <laughs> The board platter. I thought Vi would want to change a pace from drive-in food. I like drive-in food. Does this mean vegetables? A balanced diet means... In this clip, Bob takes his children, Violet and Dash, out to dinner. Bob explains that he thinks Vi would like a change of pace compared to drive-in food. Bob is saying that he thinks that Violet would like to sit down in a restaurant rather than eat food that you buy at a fast food restaurant. This would be a change in the way they normally eat. Wondering if uh, you know you'd like to come over to my house for dinner. Go uh, oh, payback for all the crummy things Bart has done to your school. Well, a home cooked meal would be a nice change of pace. I'd be delighted. In this clip, Homer invites the principal of Bard's school to have dinner at his house. The principal says that eating a home-cooked meal would be a nice change of pace. The principal is saying that eating a home-cooked meal would be a nice change from what he usually eats. We can only assume that the principal does not normally eat many home-cooked meals. Well, who do you think I did it for? I did it for us. Us? Yes, that's right. Do you know what he was planning for next Friday night's poker game as a change of pace? Do you have any idea? What? A luau. An Hawaiian luau. Roast pork, fried rice, spare ribs. And In this clip, Oscar is explaining to his friends why he got angry at his roommate, Felix. 
Oscar says that Felix was planning a crazy Hawaiian dinner for their next poker game as a change of pace. Oscar is saying that Felix wanted to change what the group normally does when they have a poker game. But Oscar thinks that this idea is very bad. Great. Now let's look at our second phrase. The name of this phrase is, go the extra mile. The meaning of this phrase is, to make a special effort to do, or to achieve something. An example of this phrase is, wow. I can't believe that my owner bought me a boat for my birthday. He went the extra mile this time. The dog is saying that he feels his owner has made a special effort to provide him with a great birthday gift. Another example of this phrase is, look at all this food. You really went the extra mile, this time, Gloria. The guest is saying that Gloria made a special effort to make a wonderful dinner for everyone. The last example of this phrase is, when Agnes cleans her house against COVID, she sure does go the extra mile. The speaker is saying that Agnes has done more than normal when cleaning against the COVID virus. And to summarize, go the extra mile means to do more than is required or expected to do. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. You can't fire Peter, sir. And why is that? Because you need him. Sure, companies need some people to work hard and go the extra mile, but more than that, they need guys like Peter. Regular guys who are happy to do a thankless job for a mediocre salary. In this clip, Cleveland is telling the manager that he can't fire Peter. He acknowledges that companies do need people that go the extra mile, but they also need guys like Peter too. Cleveland is saying that although companies do need people that will work extra hard, they also need people like Peter. In this case, go the extra mile means when someone works harder than the average employee. How'd you get them so shiny? Oh, I uh, buffed them with turtle wax. <laughs> the man down at Pet Boys says from now on the urine should just beat up and roll right off. <laughs> Way to go the extra mile. Your Mima would be proud. In this clip, Sheldon has been asked to shine all of Howard's belt buckles. After doing the task, Howard says that Sheldon did a great job and thanks him for going the extra mile. Howard is thanking Sheldon for completing the job far better than would be normally expected. Wait a minute, is that actually a check for him? No, it's a giant novelty item for winning the lottery. You're just standing really far away. Of all the people to go the extra mile for, why this guy? I don't know. He just kind of smells good and... In this clip, Dr. House is helping another man pay for his house mortgage. Wilson asks why, of all the people Dr. House knows, he's going the extra mile for this person. Wilson is asking Dr. House why he is being particularly generous with this man. Fantastic! Let's continue on with our third phrase. The name of this phrase is, rock the boat. The meaning of this phrase is, when you do or say something that will upset people or cause problems. An example of this phrase is, I've got plenty of food and a great home. However, I don't have a girlfriend. I'd like to ask the people here to find one for me, but I don't want to rock the boat. The iguana wants someone to find him a girlfriend, but he doesn't want to upset anyone. Another example of this phrase is, we had a neighborhood watch meeting and some people suggested some weird ideas. However, I didn't say anything because I didn't want to rock the boat. The person is saying that although she doesn't agree with people in the meeting, she won't say anything because she doesn't want to upset anyone. The last example of this phrase is, I know that you mean well Henry, but you keep introducing ideas that are upsetting a lot of people. Why must you always be rocking the boat? The woman is telling the man that his ideas are causing problems for other members of the company. 
And to summarize, rock the boat means to cause problems for other members of a group. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Wait, one, two, three, please. Oh, Bart, don't you see? This is what psychologists call overcompensation. Mom is racked with guilt because her marriage is failing. Hey, don't rock the boat, ma'am. Whatever it is, we're making out like bandits. In this clip, Bart is telling Lisa how happy he is with the great lunch their mother made. Lisa is not happy because she thinks that her mother is doing this because she is so sad. Bart doesn't care why it's happening. He tells Lisa, don't rock the boat. Bart is telling Lisa to not get involved with understanding why this is happening, but just enjoy the great lunches. Bart doesn't want Lisa to say anything to their mother that might stop her from making more great lunches. They took a risk staying here. So what? Still in your to separate them. Yeah, but there is nothing that we can do, is there? Well, not right now. It's not a good time to rock the boat. Why? Because you're at the center of a malpractice suit? Something like that, yeah. In this clip, Mila is not happy that the government is separating a mother from her baby. Simon says he agrees, but there's nothing that they can do. Mila says that at this time, it's not a good idea to rock the boat. Mila is saying that at this time, it is dangerous for her to do anything that might upset people at the hospital. Hang on over there. What for? Just hang on. Big drug dealer on his way to prison, gunfight in airport, every controller in the coffee shop getting beeped and hauling ass, and you rocking the boat. Connection? Come on, McLean, just a few words. Okay. In this clip, Samantha, a reporter, is trying to figure out what is happening at the airport. She tells John that there are a lot of things happening and that she thinks he is rocking the boat. Samantha is saying that she thinks that John is upsetting a lot of people at the airport and wants to know why. Because John is making people angry at the airport, he is rocking the boat. So we've now finished three phrases. What do you think? Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Great work. As I said, we're now going to discuss our fourth phrase. The name of this phrase is, rule of thumb. The meaning of this phrase is, a rule that you follow that is based on experience. An example of this phrase is, hey Morris, you know, as a rule of thumb, most cat owners think we are their pets. They don't understand that, they, are our pets. Weird, huh? Another example of this phrase is, as a rule of thumb, if it snows more than 5 inches, all schools will be closed. This means that based on practical experience, cities tend to close their schools if greater than 5 inches of snow falls. The last example of this phrase is, as a rule of thumb, if I drink more than 2 cups of coffee each day, I get nervous. The woman is saying that based on practical experience, if she drinks more than two cups of coffee, she will get nervous. To summarize, rule of thumb means a method of doing something based on experience and common sense. Excellent! Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. And you said there'd never be enough pasta for the three of us. <laughs> I stand corrected. You know, <laughs> Italian housewives have a rule of thumb. A handful of dry pasta, about an inch in diameter, is sufficient for each person. In this clip, Sheldon is talking to Leonard about cooking pasta. Sheldon says that Italian women believe that, as a rule of thumb, an inch of pasta is enough for each person. Sheldon is saying that Italian women have a theory that normally, 
an inch of pasta is enough for each person. Therefore, rule of thumb has an equivalent meaning to having a theory or a belief. A good rule of thumb is two-year salary, sir. Try this. <laughs> I can't afford that. I'm an educator. Seymour. I'll take it. In this clip, Bart is helping Principal Skinner choose an engagement ring for a woman that he likes. The salesman says that as a rule of thumb, a man should spend two years' salary on an engagement ring. The salesman is saying that, in general, most people agree that a person should spend the equivalent of two years' salary when they are buying an engagement ring. Therefore, rule of thumb is a way of saying the general belief of what a person should do in a situation. I'm perfectly comfortable speaking to small groups. I cannot speak to large crowds. What to you is a large crowd? Any group big enough to trample me to death. <laughs> general rule of thumb is 36 adults or 70 children. <laughs> In this clip, Sheldon is telling his friends that he doesn't feel comfortable talking to large groups of people. When asked, what is a large group, Sheldon says, as a rule of thumb, 36 adults or 70 children. Sheldon is saying that he has a theory that, in general, talking to more than 36 adults or 70 children is difficult. That's terrific. We're now going to look at our fifth phrase. The name of this phrase is, cut me some slack. The meaning of this phrase is, to treat someone in a less harsh or critical way. An example of this phrase is, again, everyone goes out to dinner and I'm assigned to guard duty. When are they going to cut me some slack? The dog is saying, when is everyone going to be considerate of him when they all go out to have fun? Another example of this phrase is, okay officer. Yes, technically I don't exactly own this vehicle, but can't you cut me some slack? The man is acknowledging that he doesn't own the car he's driving, but he's asking the officers to allow him to leave. Another example of this phrase is, okay, so I ate some of your food. Can't you cut me some slack? I was hungry. The white cat is asking the darker cat to not be so angry just because he ate his food. To summarize, cut me some slack means to be more lenient with someone. Excellent. Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. Look, I'm a cop, LAPD. How about a little team spirit, huh? Well, I was in LA once. Hated it. Well, I can understand. I don't like it much myself. Hey! That's a plastic bender up there! Take it easy! Go off. I'm doing my job. Okay, cut me some slack, will you? Look, I used to be a cop in New York City. I in this clip, John McClain is talking to a police officer about not punishing him for parking his car illegally. He asks the police officer to cut him some slack. John is asking the officer to be lenient with him and not punish him. Cut me some slack means to ask someone to treat them less harshly or critically. You're new on Harry's team, aren't you? Yes. So what makes you think the slack I cut him in any way translates to you? L let me show you what we got. In this clip, the boss is angry at Harry and his team about a mission that didn't go as planned. When a new member, Faisal, tries to defend Harry, the boss gets angry and says, what makes you think the slack I cut him, translates to you. The boss is asking Faisal why he thinks the leniency that he gives towards Harry will apply to him also. Fine, then we'll, uh, we'll make the turn at the next siding. Next side is not for 10 miles. We do that, we're late. I don't run late. Just green sheet it and we'll move. Come on, we green sheet it and it's my ass. Cut me some slack. Please, your I ass. You're up, a Colson. Right? What the hell is that oh, supposed to be? You... In this clip, Will has made a mistake and is arguing with Frank about how to solve the problem. Frank's solution is to green sheet it, but Will doesn't want to do this because he will be in trouble. Will tells Frank to cut him some slack, 
but Frank doesn't want to help him. Will is asking Frank to not be so harsh and strict with him and allow him to solve the problem his way. All of us here at TD English hope that you're enjoying these videos, but we need your help. The YouTube algorithm doesn't really support us because we are a young channel. If you enjoyed these videos, please spread the word by copying the link to this video to Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, or any other form of social media that you use. We need our community of English learners to work together to allow us to produce more of this content. We also want to thank all of you for subscribing and helping us. It is greatly appreciated. You're doing great. Let's look at our sixth phrase. The name of this phrase is Wild Goose Chase. The meaning of this phrase is, when you waste time searching for something you have little chance of finding. An example of this phrase is, Myrtle, I know that you love strawberries, but I think looking for them this time of year is a wild goose chase. The goose is telling his wife that it is very unlikely that they will find strawberries growing outside in the winter. Another example of this phrase is, many people think it's a wild goose chase, but I think that I can find some rare dinosaur bones in East Asia. The man is saying that although many people think that there are probably no dinosaur bones in East Asia, he disagrees. The last example of this phrase is, I love Edgar, but I think looking for evidence of Bigfoot is a wild goose chase. This means that I don't believe that Bigfoot exists, and I think that Edgar is wasting his time. To summarize, wild goose chase means, when you are looking for something that doesn't exist or you are unlikely to find. Great! Now let's look at some video clips for examples of this phrase. Excuse me, officers. This may sound like a wild goose chase, but I think I just saw... Saw what? Elvis. In this clip, John McClain thinks that he should report a famous criminal he thought that he saw recently. He tells the officers that this may be a wild goose chase. John is saying that he might be asking them to do a large search for someone that is not actually a criminal. A wild goose chase is looking for something that doesn't exist or cannot be found. A useless thing to do. For the love... Hey, Lincoln 30 to dispatch. 8030, go ahead. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. Over. But nobody has no In this clip, Sergeant Powell is calling into the police station on a report that he was asked to investigate. He explains that the report made to the police station turned out to be a wild goose chase. The sergeant is saying that investigating this report was a waste of time. He feels that he was looking for a crime that didn't exist. Um, um, a foolish old man has been drawn into a wild goose chase by a harpy in trousers and a nincompoop. In this clip, Rooster Cogburn is feeling very frustrated about a search that he has been hired to do. He says that he has been drawn into a wild goose chase. He is saying that he has been asked to look for someone that may not be anywhere near them. He thinks this job may be a complete waste of time. Okay, we've come to our last phrase. The name of this phrase is, lost your touch. The meaning of this phrase is, to no longer be able to do something as well as you could before. An example of this phrase is, ah. She wants me to jump. I'll show her a jump. Yeah. I haven't lost my touch. That's for sure. The dog is saying that he still has the ability to jump very well. Another example of this phrase is, oh darling. 
You sure haven't lost your touch when making sandwiches. They look delicious. The woman is complimenting her husband on still having the ability to make a great sandwich. The last example of this phrase is, look at Tasha talking to that handsome man. She certainly hasn't lost her touch at flirting with cute guys. This means that Tasha has always been, and still is, skilled at talking with handsome men. To summarize, lost your touch means to lose your ability or talent that you once had. Fantastic! Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. We'll find all 12 signatures on it. I'm afraid we feel you've rather lost your touch. In this clip, Mr. Malfoy is delivering a letter of suspension to Professor Dumbledore. Malfoy says that the committee feels that Dumbledore has lost his touch. Malfoy means that the committee feels that Dumbledore has lost his abilities as a good professor. Lost your touch means to lose your special abilities at doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't lost the old touch? Watch this one. Cut the deck, but don't show me your card. In this clip, Howard is showing his son that he has a high level of skill playing cards. He shows him how he can shuffle the cards in a very skilled manner and then says he hasn't lost the old touch. Howard is saying that he has not lost his abilities to play cards over the years. He is still very skilled. This place is totaled. And we didn't wreck it. We're losing our touch, bro. In this clip, the playground that Manny built for his child has been destroyed. Typically, this is the kind of thing that Crash and Eddie would normally do. Since somebody did it before them, Crash says, we're losing our touch, bro. Crash is saying that since somebody did the destruction before them, they are losing their ability to destroy things before other animals do it. Congratulations, you've completed the video. I hope that you will now understand these phrases when you hear them in the future.